So uh, my original title was Psych Ads as Narcotics, but I've been informed that a better title is Psychoactive Psych Ads. And um, so the purpose is today, I just want to kind of go over very briefly what is known. It's uh, very fragmentary, a lot more research needed, and then the significance of why psych ads used psychoactively, why that's important in ritual and also in conservation. Some of the methods, ethno ethnographic interviews uh, kind of came across this in Mexico and in South Africa as well. Myself, I've published uh, somewhat on that. Literature review, there are some older works on psych ads, particularly from the 50s and 60s when there was a lot of interest in their neurotoxicity and also working on translation of uh, local nomenclature in uh, India. Now, the background, very little has been written about narcotic uh, and intoxicating uses of psych ads. It was overlooked by ethnobotanists such as Schultes. It's very difficult to detect because psych ad use uh, is often illegal and it's typically the purview of uh, shamans. Also, the main reason, as in all psych ad research involving uh, human uses, is because uh, psych ads are extremely poisonous with a lot of neurological and uh, effects, effects on the liver and so forth. So what are psych ads very briefly? maybe somewhat new for a lot of you. They look like palms, a lot of them, but they're not. They're gymnosperms, and they have male and female plants. There's about 350 species worldwide, and they're pretty much almost all of them endangered. Very significant in religious belief and practice. So cycads um, are associated with power. We'll see a little of that in presentations later on. Virility, desire, longevity, because they themselves live for a thousand years or longer. In many cases, they're resilient. It's very hard to get rid of them and uh, often associated with the, uh, the afterlife. Plenty of medicinal uses. Some work has been done on that. Widespread uses for food and drink worldwide. Extremely toxic, so several, um, several compounds, including BMAA and amino acid. These do damage to the nervous system, the liver, other organs, so for uh, using for human uh, purposes, typically humans know how to detoxify them. This is going to be a little complicated in these uses as drugs because we don't really understand if they detoxify them or whether they're you know, taking the toxins and what's that, what that's doing to them. A map here of psychiatric ranges worldwide, mostly tropical. As you can see, centers of diverse city in Mexico, South Africa, and Australia. And the three areas where I picked up the some of the stronger narcotic uses in South India, uh, Limpopo, South Africa, and uh, Mexico. Alcohol uses as well, I just kind of touch on that. It's not my main interest today, but fermented psych ad starch has been made and continues to be made, I think, in some places, very widespread. Japan, at least in the past, southern Japan, Northwestern Mexico, a lot of destruction of species for this, widely across Africa, several species in the uh, Encephalartos genus. So my primary interest, what really uh, got me fascinated was uh, that psychids are used as hallucinogens, induced visions. We don't know what kind of visions. We don't really know anything about it. We don't have ethnographic accounts of it happening in any detail, just that it does happen. And one of the most intriguing, you know, how I started on this is I came across the term, use of the term peyote very similar effects to the famous cactus that has this term. I'll talk about that a little bit later. Ritual and recreational uses. And then South Africa, the, the cortex and the leaf scars or the, the inner cortex here used as some sort of hard drug as well as medicinally and possibly elsewhere. Psychoactive effects on stock. And so cattle... According to some older indications, Azamia staggers is very common in Australia and uh, does huge damage to cattle and um, other livestock, but they appear to become addicted. They eat certain parts of the cycads and they will go back and, and just seek these out. And so this causes this hind limb paralysis is well known in Dominican Republic, Mexico and other parts of the world. It's unclear to what extent this affects their brains. The term in northeastern Mexico, is a, these species are known as crazy uh, plants, uh, crazy weeds. But um, what exactly is going on, what attraction these might have for um, cattle is hard to know. And another thing that 
bears a lot of examination. I f- was recently found found on the internet YouTube videos, how to videos, how to prepare these substances. Um, uses as aphrodisiacs in South India and Sri Lanka, cycas species, particularly this one. These are male cycad cones with all of the pollen, and they're taking the pollen out. And this can be done from cy- apparently any cycas species. They're using it externally and internally. So this is a, a fl- flower of uh, desire, as it's called. This is one of over 100 names in several South Asian languages. So there's a lot of that. There's a lot of places you can buy these online and um, as an aphrodisiac, but it's also reported as a narcotic. And that I haven't seen any reports on, and I've not done any field work in India myself. So this remains an interesting question. In the Americas, there also seems to be an attraction, definitely in Panama and also Peru and the Brazilian Amazon. I discovered this the other day. Uh, One of the Catuaba extracts is uh, used, and this is a Zamia ule, a a cycad from the Amazon, although this term is used for other plants, and this little one here is not a uh, cycad at all. So that's hard to know. Like a lot of this, it's very liminal. A little bit here on some of these uses in Mexico that I'm most familiar with, and even there compared to the work um, published a fair amount with colleagues uh, on uses in Mexico and Central America, uh, relations to maize cultivation and and a lot of other things. So this was also kind of a sideline, but when I found out that some of these uses were by the same people that consider cycads to be ancestors of maize, it became a lot more interesting. Very difficult to research. Uh, one of my colleagues, uh, Andrew Vovides, discovered this in Sonora, that one of the so-called peyote cycads was originally, was said to be used in the Yaqui Wars as like a, a, as something that you would take to make you uh, go crazy in battle, in lo que ser. Peyote, people just said this is a type of peyote. We look for it. Um, you know, this is this is a drug that some people use. They wouldn't usually talk about themselves doing it. It would typically be someone else. And in northeastern Mexico, um, several species, different terms used. Again, very hidden. People embarrassed to talk about it. Not really, you know, it's difficult to figure out how to research this. And this was something new for me. But um species here, uh, different zamias. These are, again, the male cones and uh, associated with uses of the pollen from the male cones. This is a male cone as well as uh, parts of the roots. So the peyote, which I think is one of the most interesting um, findings, this would be the cactus, but using cycads as peyote, different species, very distinct looking. The original translation of the term peyote, well, the one that, that I like that refers to the, uh, the, 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 the hairs and is related to the silkworm. This comes from 15, the 1570s. So it, peyote is used for several plants, not just the cactus, but um, any cases. So just to wrap up very quickly, the significance of all of this I think in Mexico, it's something that's going to help us understand better what role shamans played in the relationship of cycad to maize, which apparently goes back a few thousand years. In South India, the, trying to tease out these narcotic uses or experiences as connected into Tamil traditional medicine and Ayurveda medicine, and this related to Kama desire, sexual desire, and so forth. In Southern Africa, it's psychids are used in Muti medicine. They're talked about being used as used in medicine, but you know, how does this connect the, the fact that people apparently have visions while consuming psychids? You know, what, what is the connection to cycads often talked about as ghost plants and, and uh, other types of concepts? Significance for cycad conservation. So the end of it, this is the last slide. There's a lot of destruction 
where I've seen in South Africa and Panama and Mexico, specifically in the areas where site cats are being damaged for many reasons, but particularly recreational uses seem to follow on from ritual uses. People find out and then they say, oh, I want to try this. And then, so it's very similar to the use of peyote cactus in Mexico that's just absolutely being devastated by, by, by recreational use. And since even touching cycads is pretty much illegal, people don't talk about it for various reasons. Use of the cone pollen could be more sustainable, um, possibly in India. So ritual uses are secret. And like I said, so this is a, a big problem. It's very hard to get people to talk about. So this last point there's a real need to create awareness of psychads in conservation uh, among ethnographers. When they find them, people don't know how to talk about them. Uh, people don't know how to ask or what to ask. And hopefully some of our publications are making some headway there. But then within this, the subset of psychoactive uses, um, this is something that needs to be approached with a lot of caution to be able to protect and value the knowledge. And it's something I've tried to do a little bit in northeastern Mexico just as a start. And hopefully after the uh, pandemic, be able to do a little bit of more research on that.